to the Atlantic City Convention Center on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey for an evening of HBO World Championship Boxing. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Commissioner Larry Hazard, Deputy Commissioner John Preco, Chairman Jerry Gormley, and board members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz. Ring officials assigned by the New Jersey State Athletic Board of Control. Your ringside physicians are Dr. Ken Remsen, Dr. Howard Taylor, Dr. Earl Shaw, and Dr. Charles Wilson. Your timekeeper this evening is the artful art spell, counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Honest Earl Curry. Ladies and gentlemen, Azoff Wald in association with Main Events, Fight Night, Bally's Park Place, and Seagram Seven Crown, America's Good Spirit presents HBO Sports Main Event, 12 rounds for the Linear Heavyweight Championship of the World. New Jersey judges at ringside. From West Orange, Al DeVito. From Barnegat, Barbara Perez. And from Edison, Shafiq Rashada. Your referee for this event from Patterson, New Jersey, Eddie Cotton. Here now are the principals first in the blue corner to my left, wearing the blue trunks, red trim, weighing 230 pounds. He is undefeated in 36 professional bouts. He has 31 wins by way of knockout from Greenwood Lake, New York. Here is the challenger, Lou Savarese. Savarese. His opponent in the red corner wearing the white trunks with red, white, and blue trim weighing 253 pounds. His professional record, 75 victories, four defeats. He has 68 wins by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he hails from Marshall, Texas. Here is the linear heavyweight champion of the world, Big Joe. championship of the world. Boxers, you received your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my command. Let's touch gloves. Have a good, clean fight. I got him. I got him. Can a fighter without a past have a future like Sabarese? Can a fighter with only a past have a present? That's what we're going to find out shortly. George looks in pretty good shape. George looks in excellent shape. 253 pounds at the weigh-in yesterday. By unanimous acclamation, better shape than was the case against Crawford Grimsley in his last outing in Tokyo. Savarese. Threw 100 punches per round against Buster Mathis Jr. As Larry Merchant pointed out, it's unlikely he would try that many against a puncher like George. George tapped the light jab, and uh, Savarese smartly sent in a, a little left hook. Kind of a laconic start to the fight. Both men moving slowly around the ring as Savarese gets ready to taste George's power at some point. Savarese is not used to backing up, but he's moving to his right to avoid George's right hand because he knows that's George's best punch. The right cudgel. <laughs> sort of clubs with it. There was a time when George's jab was the most formidable in the heavyweight division, but he's not nearly as quick with it, as, uh, with it anymore. Savarese landing a light combination there. Savarese, for the first time in the fight, moves George backward with a double jab. There's 
missed the jab by Foreman. He'll come up top with it and then go to the body. Savarys cranks in a counter left as Foreman tried to feint with his right. Savarys has a pretty good strategy going here. He's making George throw the big punches and miss, and he's countering with two and three shot combinations. He's Savarys off. continually moving to his right. And Savarys is also going to George's body early. Little mouse under Savarys' left eye as George cuffs him across the top with the right hand. Right hand to the body by Savarys. Foreman backs away and now comes back to station himself in front of Savarys and Savarys dances along the ropes. Uppercut by Savarys. Couple of right hands to the body. Foreman slow to back away. Savarys' condition is going to be a big, important factor here tonight because Foreman's going to keep pressure on him even if he is hitting Foreman a lot. Eddie Cotton says, don't rabbit punch him. Savarese with a left hook up top. Last 10 seconds of the round. Lou Savarese more active, as you would have expected, in round number one. Don't let him be fired in the job. He's trying to suck you in the shit. Yes. And then yeah. turn the right hand and turn the back thing. He's going to hold and go back down to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have everything to do. Come on, just relax. Peyton around. You saw that Savarys in close. Do a nice little right uppercut. Shook George's head back, but didn't seem to phase him very much. Savarys claims that he had sparred with George for about 40 rounds before the Schultz fight, and George swears he doesn't remember him. I wonder mm -hmm. if George doesn't want to remember him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Savarese took that one in stride. He says, well, yeah, okay. Foreman landing a thudding left hand as he walked in. With a little lead right, which you don't see George throw very often. The man who spoke most, and there's a hard right hand by Savarese up top. The man who spoke most to Foreman between rounds is Charlie Shipes. Dundee had very little of anything to say. He won't get laryngitis working with George. <laughs> Jab by Foreman. Savarese taps to the body a couple times. Left hook up top by Savarese. Foreman lands a left uppercut. Both fighters had very good left hands just then. Savarese has a still head, Roy. He's not exactly elusive in there. No, he's not. But he's doing very good at taking George's punches right now. Better than expected. He better move his head from the left and the right to the left and right thumb, though, because if George hits him with this left uppercut, it will be all over. Putting right hand up top by Foreman. Savarese coming back with a combination. And Savarese is beginning to show a little tire. He's breathing hard, and Foreman has pressure on him. Foreman won't let Savarese rest. If you're expecting George to tire, you may wait longer than you think because he is so amazingly relaxed in the ring. In his prime, George Foreman could hurt men with glancing blows. Yeah, and now I think Savarese's punch output is going down a little bit because he's catching punches from George. I punched that number, Savarese threw 64 in round number one. That would be a good busy work rate for him if he could keep it up. George is hitting him with some big, big jabs. Solid left hook step back, thrown George. by Savarese. Foreman has been much more active in round number two. Stop him, stop him, stop him. Ooh, stop him he only threw head. 22 stop punches in the first round. Has greatly exceeded that total here. George is popping a very good jab in between Savarese's gloves. Well, I've heard
heard both you and George sit next to me and say it gets a lot easier when you have an effective jab. It does get a lot easier because it keeps your, keeps your opponent from thinking that you can hit him with the jab. Good job. You got it out, mouthpiece? Okay, give me. Real good, real good. Bring your hands back. That's all. Bring okay. your hands back. <laughs> Don't lose your balance. Keep your hands down. Put your hands down. You hear me? Come on. Don't get caught. Go out that box. Go back to boxing. Wait, get that right hand up in that jab. Right jab. Turn the right hand Okay? Uh -huh. Don't Take get caught up in that shit. You okay? Uh -huh. You're doing good. You're doing good. Just box more. Box more and you get your punches off. Right. Okay. Savarese is staying right in front of George, landed a nice straight right and two left hooks. But staying in front of George has not been a formula for success in the recent past. He is not using very much movement in or out, left or right. Remember that Michael Moorer stood in front of Foreman, found it easy to score against him, but wasn't able to finish the fight upright. In the second round, Foreman launched 28 left jabs and landed 19 of them. Two these good body shots by very, very good body shots, and these punches were weak in a fight in the long run, as we found out. Foreman sticking that jab and landing consistently. Savarese coming back with combinations. Blue, let's up. Keep him up a little bit, too. Up a little bit. Let's go. Come ahead. Is, is there blood from Savarese? Well, he had a mouse over his eye in the first round, or under his eye in the first round. George just hit him with a beautiful one-two combination. George is quick tonight, Roy. George looks very good tonight. Savarese thundering a right hand against George's left cheekbone. Foreman has always taken punch as well. Yeah. This is a very good fight for George Foreman. Yeah. Well, what we know about George is that his chin is Texas granite. Yeah. Right. Stop her, stop her, stop her. Step back, step back, step back, step back. There is a cut yep. over Savarese's left eye. In a bad place, too. That blood starts to flow. It could affect Savarese's vision and make it hard for him to stop George's right hand. That eye, I understand, has been cut in the past. And now working with a target, George thunders forward like a pachyderm, looking for opportunities to stomp. <laughs> that reason has to make sure he covers up from this left uppercut that George throws inside. Oh, good right body shot by Foreman. Okay, let's go. is working uh, come on, come good on, on the inside Watch to stop Reese's body. Savory still step standing step in step front step of step Foreman step and allowing him to land, not moving side to side as he did in the first round, not giving Foreman angles, trading punches with him. This has become a torture, a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here. This cannot be good for Savarees to stand in there and slug toe-to-toe -to -toe with Foreman, unless he's absolutely certain he can take these shots, Roy. Yeah, I think he'd be better off to stay outside and use the jab against Foreman. So. What he did in the first round was an excellent plan. Good Don't fight inside with him. Don't do that him. Box this guy. You hear me? That jab is you ready that morning with him. Take your hand and put you in the lap. Put your hand in the lap. Listen to me. Yeah? Box more. You and your speed and quickness. Bluey. You know you gotta aim your punches a little bit him, alright? From here. You gotta aim those punches. Let's go. Use your quickness and use your power. Yeah, use your quickness. Don't get to party with him, man. He wants that shit. He ain't got to move a little bit. Make him move a little bit. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, pick the right spot. Seconds out! 
George sees the eye, goes for the eye, hits the eye. Round four of a scheduled 12 for George Foreman and Lou Savarese. Savarese looked in the first round as though he wanted to box Foreman, and you heard his cornermen between rounds asking him to go back to that and to stop standing inside slugging with George. Sometimes when a guy doesn't know how to fight backing up, or when he doesn't have a lot of experience fighting stop backing up, stop 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 it makes him lose confidence Come to on, back up from a guy. He feels as though he's head. changing stop his strategy too much. Letterman, how'd you score the first three rounds? Jim, I got a two to one, Lou Savarese, 29, 28 in points. I thought Lou Savarese boxed nicely in the first round. I'll punch George toe to toe in the second, but that out, that toe to toe style didn't work for Lou Savarese in the third. Interestingly enough, one rule, Jersey, you can't wear a hat in the corner. That's why Tommy Gallagher doesn't have his hat on tonight. Harold, you know everything. I also have it two rounds to one so far for uh, Savarese. This is a better heavyweight fight than some of the fighters with the guys that are in their prime. For entertainment value, how can you beat it? Two big guys pounding away against each other. That's part of why the public loves Big George. No chess matches. Okay, George, keep him up. You're all right. You're all right. Keep him up, okay? Let's keep him up. Let's go. When last you saw referee Eddie Cotton in a big fight of international impact, he was disqualifying Andrew Galata against Riddick Bowe, and entirely correctly so. Oh, good body shot by Savarese. Needs more of those. Needs a lot more of those. George Foreman goes out and he's just chopping at a tree, just like he does every morning when he wakes up. I suspect George can fight till he's 60 if he keeps finding opponents who will stand right in front of him. The problems he's had were when opponents didn't stand right in front of him. George is looking better than I've seen him look in a long time. It is awfully hard to beat George Foreman the fight that Savarese is fighting right here. All right, stop one, stop one, stop one. Good there job. are a lot good, of good punches job. being Looking traded good. here. If he can beat Foreman this way, he'll be the first one to have done it. Muhammad Ali didn't do this. Jimmy Young didn't do this. Evander Holyfield didn't do this. And Tommy Morrison didn't do it. That's why they were all winners against George Foreman. left to the body by Foreman. Another round in a phone booth for Lou Savarese. Just don't lay him. Keep turning when you're throwing your shots, just like you did near the end of the round. Keep turning. Okay. Give me the grease. Give me some water. Open up. Yeah, grab Put your arms down, Lou. Not bad. Come on, Louis. Got to pay attention to what you're doing in there. You got to get that, that loop. Right. Try to box a little bit more. Right. Keep this guy off you. You're getting that, you're molding, you're molding with him. See, he wants you to do that. Boom, he ain't got boom. no strength. You're smothering your punches. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah. Box a little bit more. <laughs> Don't trade. Don't have to trade. Bing, bing, get out. Bing, bing, get out. Yeah. Give him the mouth. Close. Check it out. Isn't that interesting <laughs> that the advice for Foreman is to do the things that we thought Savary should do. He doesn't want George <laughs> to trade. And I, you explain it to me, Roy. Well, what he's telling him is not that, that he doesn't want him to trade. He's telling him that after he punches, he wants him to step around to the left or the right. That'll keep him from catching so many punches after he throws his punches. He wants that inside fight, but he doesn't want him to stay directly still so he'll be a target. Foreman winning another round on Letterman's guard. Savarese's jab output has gone down in every round so far. He threw only 10 jabs in the fourth round as he has resorted to trading power shots to George Foreman at close range. George Foreman has hit Lou Savarese with four straight big left hands, and they don't seem to bother Savarese at all. 
One thing Sal Reese has made up in his mind, though, he is not going to run from George Foreman. And just as Foreman's punches don't seem to be creating immediate damage for Savarese, by the same token, Savarese's punches don't hurt George. Well, nothing hurts George. <laughs> George has had a history in his recent bouts of getting puffy in the face, puffy around the eyes, and cutting in the late rounds. But here it is, Savarese, who's cut in the early rounds. Still scoring against Foreman. George uses his arms for defense so well. Not many fighters know how to do that. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Well, his arms are as big as most people's legs. <laughs> Now South Reese is pushing George back like George normally does other people. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Good job, good job. Let's Hard man to stop push. Step back, I got it. <laughs> push a guy around that pulls cars around. I started to say. <laughs> he shot at the car strapped to his back. <laughs> South Reese has seen that. He might not be bothering him to try to push him. Boom. South Reese talking to George as he takes the right hand and comes back with a combination. Valerice is having a good time in here right now. Well, if he likes getting hit, this is like a luxury vacation. This is the only fight that Savarese knows. It's one with which George is rather intimately familiar, too. in Atlantic City. <laughs> Real Sports promo. Don't miss the May edition of the Emmy Award winning Real Sports with Brian Gumbleton among the stories we're working on. An in-depth profile of world-class personality and basketball player Charles Barkley. And a look at why baseball still hasn't been able to replace Bud Selig with a permanent commissioner. Monday, May 12, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Hey, uh, come here. Keep them turning, keep them turning. Just don't lay in there. The guy's looking to rest on you, okay? okay? You're doing good with that referee. Close your mouth. Go right. Fire. Yeah. Come on. You got to set it up and fire, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Six more. Come on, baby. Come on. Close your eyes. See yeah. Got to set it up. Okay. Watch that hole behind the head. Yeah. Roy, okay. what do you think Dundee means when he says to George, you're doing good with the referee? I don't know. I didn't hear him when he said it. Maybe he's not. He's telling him that um, the referee is warning him. On, I don't know what he means by that. Maybe he means he's getting away with <laughs> the yeah. occasional low blow. I was about to say, the referee is not warning him for stuff. Yeah. Or what he could mean is that George may be doing something that he shouldn't be doing, but he's doing it on the opposite side of the referee. In other words, when the referee is to George's left, he could be doing something with the right hand that the ref doesn't see. Round five, which was a good one for Savarese. He went back to the higher punch count, threw more jabs. He threw 30 jabs in the round, 80 punches overall. And seemed to be doing better with that formula. No, look, no, 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 come on, let's do one more time. Keep it, keep it up, keep it up. Okay, behind that, let's go. We want to take a point away. I promise there's a guy on my basketball team by the name of Mike Hackett that could be George Foreman's twin. Could be George Foreman's twin? He's about George's height. His head is shaped just like George. It's, it's unbelievable. You might have heard referee Eddie Cotton warn Savarese that he would take a point away if he hit George in the clinches behind the head again. A rabbit punch warning from Cotton. Stop punching, stop back. Good job, fellas. Listen up. And as Cotton demonstrated in the Galata Bow fight, he will penalize him. A punch that will work for George right now is that if he fakes the left jab and comes with the left hook. Mainly because Salaries commits with the right hand to block the jab so much because jab, George's jab is so hard. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, pick him up, pick him up, Lou. Pick him up. What about George's uppercut, Roy? 
Well, George may be a little tired or he may be taking a little break here. He's not punching as much as he was earlier. You know, which raises the question of stamina if this goes on. Stamina and conditioning and age. He's conditioned. He's well conditioned. He's probably just taking a small break. They trade jabs after the Savarese combination. Foreman thudding away with the right hand inside. Savarese doing a lot of things well in rounds five and six. Jabbing, remembering to go to the body, but still taking a lot of George Foreman's thudding blows. You know, he's obviously not a big power puncher, but he puts his punches together rather nicely. And he certainly has lived up to the moment. He hasn't, he's dealt with all of this with some very nice poise. Yes, he has. Halfway through a schedule 12, and for both fighters, the likely knockout rounds have passed. That's down. He walking in wide open. Down and throw that right hand. Stokey punches up, keep your hand closed. Double up on that uppercut. Don't just let it go to the Your left uppercut. Okay. Double up on it. It's working beautifully. Under, oh, up. Do it. Okay. Keep turning. Okay? Don't forget to look at you hear what George just said? I don't know what's holding him up. He's hitting it with some big shots, and he's not going anywhere. George, look how the vein is showing in South Reese's right arm now. George is a super salesman. You wonder if he is selling the judges on what's going on in here, because he is the aggressor. Well, with regard to the subject of what's holding Savarese up, Axel Schultz took a lot of heavy lumber in 12 rounds and stood up. Now, there's a question really about how much George is a heavy puncher and whether he is a real power puncher anymore is is questionable. He did knock out Moore, but Moore had shown that he couldn't take a big man's punch in the past. But he's hit Schultz with a lot of clean punches. He's hit Savarese with clean punches. And you heard him, he himself say, what's holding him up? <laughs> George is still a big puncher. I can tell you from looking at the way that George throws his punches. Can you? Yes, I can. But they always say, Roy, the punch that hurts you most is the one that you don't see. And it's hard to imagine the foreman punch that you don't see. That's how you can tell he's a big puncher, because you see him, and he still knocks people out with him. Keep up, George. Keep up. Savarese. Apparently happy with the way he's scoring on the inside. Let him go, let him go, Lou, let him go. Willing to stand in with George Foreman. What do you make of that bulging vein along Savarese's right shoulder and arm? I don't know what that is. It looks like it wants to pop. He may be about to change and turn into the Incredible Hulk. Well, it <laughs> happens in a lot of his fights. It's a, a common syndrome for Savarese. Just missed with the right hand there. Keep him up, keep Foreman up, thudding him to the body. Watch him head. George Foreman. Strong legs for Lou Savarese. Able to lean against Foreman without giving ground. And strong legs can keep a fighter up against a power puncher. Yes, they can. Foreman right around the belt line there. Safaris breaks away with an uppercut, goes back to the jab, lands a right hand and a left hook, and Foreman keeps rumbling forward. Means nothing to George. I mean, here's a guy, like I said, that totes cars around all day. <laughs> <laughs> a big punch is nothing for him to tote. Or not. The Savary shots, you know are doing damage because you see them. I have it four rounds, two, and one even. So 
Savarys ahead on both scorecards here. As we go into the last five rounds of the fight. Savarys starting to move around a little bit more and stay up on his toes as round eight begins. Foreman getting up and dancing a little bit with him. like Moore at this stage of the fight. You know, not a lot of heavyweights do have much head movement. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Watch your elbows, watch your elbows. Come on, come on, go watch your elbows, George. came the right hand one time. Yeah. Savarys handled it very well. Comes back punching in combination. Right. Crowd starting to chant Louis, Louis, Louis. <laughs> Louis isn't punching as much this round as he has in the previous round. Now he starts to get a little more active. Some of the body shots from George in the early rounds may be starting to show a little here. Now, Savarys goes one, two, three times to the body here. His punches look a lot slower than they did in the early rounds, though. But he's landing. This amounts to a Savarys rally over the course of the past 15, 20 seconds. Stop one, stop one, stop one, stop one. I got you. Now it's Savarys who hits Foreman in the back of the head. So now both fighters have been warned for rabbit punching. Good left hook by Savarys. Good combination by Savarys. Left hook by Foreman. And left uppercut. Savarese has gone beyond eight rounds only once in his career. He's got four critical rounds coming up. Bunstat numbers through the first eight rounds find Savarese landing 58 more punches than Foreman, throwing 249 more punches than Foreman. But Foreman landing 53% of all the blows he launches. Good right hand inside by Savarese. Savary's still flurrying in combinations. Foreman wading in, pounding one punch at a time. I wonder if George remembers those 40 rounds of sparring now. <laughs> because I think the fact that Savary sparred with him so many rounds may be helping him in this fight. Yes, it could be. 
George going more and more to the uppercut now in the latter part of round eight and the beginning of round nine. He certainly isn't behaving like a sparring partner, Roy. No, he isn't. He's behaving like the one who knows what they're doing. Someone who's been here, done this. <laughs> And he's the one who may have learned something from that sparring match, if it happened. You know, of course, George has been in with so many guys in sparring. It's understandable that if he didn't remember. Mm, I don't know. You tell me, Roy. I'm Is trying it to possible to have sparred 40 <laughs> rounds with a guy and remember nothing? If I sparred 40 seconds with him, I know it. That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm just trying to give George the best of it. I don't want to accuse him of old ageism. Or how about psychological gamesmanship? Savary so far able to take everything Foreman throws and keep coming back with his own. And these are some tremendous exchanges. Your money's worth yes, the indeed. Atlantic City Convention Center. Take a look inside. A good left hook. Short left hook by George Foreman. Through nine rounds, George is still punching away. And there was a standing ovation at the end of that round across the ring from us. One of the standees, the great Joe DiMaggio. Guys, I once saw DiMaggio sitting ringside for a Sugar Ray Robinson fight with Ernest Hemingway. Jab comes, George comes out landing this jab early. And Savary suddenly doesn't look quite as willing to take George's punch. Maybe he's wearing down a little. into the corner and then slips out. Oh, good body shot by Let's Big George. Up, good job. Watch some hands. Inside, neither chooses to punch so much. A real hard right by Savarese inside, but you just can't discourage George. I, mean, I, see the man. I doubt that any man in history has taken a punch as well as George Foreman. Right, stop punch, stop punch, stop punch, stop punch. Good job. Step back, step back. Which only makes Ali's knockout of him in Kinshasa Zaire that much more miraculous. Well, of course, that, that was that was fatigue and and a mental you know, kind of breakdown in the ring. That was a different George Foreman, a Foreman who fought so hard in the early fights and 
so robotically that he wasted himself. Foreman sticking the telephone pole jab into Savarese's mouth. 52 seconds to go in round 10. George has leveled a lot of punishment at Savarese in this round. Yes, he has. Indeed. Oh, good uppercut by George. One of the amazing things, at age 48, how accurate George can be with his punches. Product of reflexes that are still there. Almost inexplicably at this point. That was a good body shot by Lee Savarese. Good combination. Left hook up top following the body shot. Another left and right by Savarese. Hard left hook up top by Savarese. Foreman thunders back. Savarese Round 10 ends. Savarese is tied, but he refuses to let George beat him. How about a rinse? You want a rinse? No. No, okay, good. Thought about it for a second. Put the ice in my mouth. Nice start. There's the Yankee Clipper. One of the great men of sporting history in America. Here we see George going to work with his left hook, which has been his most effective punch along with his left jab. He's done relatively little damage with his right Your old man's in this up fight. There with mine. Bring this home. Fight this guy. Use your jab. Come on. Let's go. With that. Tommy Gallagher trying to whip his horse home, reminding him what's at stake here for both of them. Your old man's up there with mine. Savarese, his father, died in 1989, just shortly before he began his professional career. He says that he weathered the storm of his father's death by writing poetry about it. Sometimes it eases your mind from stuff when you write about it. Unless you get the frustration outside of you. Stop one, stop one, stop one, stop one. Stop holding the hip too. Let's go. Good job. Keep him up. Both on you. Hard left hand by Foreman. Savarese momentarily stopped in his tracks. Now begins to throw again. The right hand is low. Every time George catches Savarese with a, with a punch, Savarese counters. And usually with more than one shot. Even though Savarese is fighting a 48-year-old man, his stock might rise after this fight, win or lose. He's fighting a 48-year-old man who is equivalent to some 25-year-old men. <laughs> George really does still have some stuff. A lot of Question stuff. about it. A lot of stuff, and he keeps pressure on your whole entire fight. Most of the guys that are in their primes can't do this. Well, part of it is that he's not terribly worried about your punch. That's part of it. I mean, if you walk around with a Jeep on your back all day, would you be worried about a punch? <laughs> <laughs> Savarese about to throw the right again. Now he backs off. Three punch combination from Savarese. Thunderous right hand uppercut by Foreman. Good body shots by Lou Savarese. Good head shots by George Foreman. Round 11, another war in a phone booth.
get this. Why, why would he take a point away for the first bad low blow, Harold, even though he warned him about some shots behind the head earlier? Well, Larry, I tell you, it all started with Angelo Dundee before the fight started. He was psyching Eddie Cotton, yelling he's going to hold us behind the head, and sure as the devil. Cotton started warning him for rabbit punches and hold him on head. And then Cotton warned him a couple times for low blows. He finally pulled the point. But I think it really was unjustified because he never hit him fragrantly, fragrantly low. I agree. I think that was not a good... Oh, that goes to Alvarez. That left hook hurts Alvarez, but I don't think George knows it. He will make it out this round, though. That left hook did hurt me. It is a low blow. Flagrant. You decide. They're trying to rob this fucking fight from me. You have it, Lou? Yeah. Oh. Come on, fuck the eye. Put your hands down, Lou. Come on. You have it, Lou? Can you, you give us one more three minutes? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Can you go all out with these three minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me, uh, give me the, uh, give me the three. There you go. You're looking pretty. Come on, peace. Okay. Last round, George. Last round. Back to you. End of the round, George left hand. Big, tall, right, strong left out. hand. Man, please. George is a salesman, but he's got a product to sell. trying to close the show in his 80th professional prize fight dancing and chasing Savarese in the 12th out of 12 rounds this is very disencouraging to a young fighter to have a guy 48 years old chasing you at the end of 12 rounds Savarese's activity level way down in the 12th. Now here he comes. Those body shots that George is hitting him with has basically drained to We got him. We got him. Well, he's showing a lot of heart and a lot of courage. This is his first big time match. He's in with one of the better conditioned guys he ever could have faced, and he's been there the whole night. And he's not trying to back down now. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Come on, come on, we got him. Come on. All right, let him go, let him go. Stop punching. Go, step back, step back. Step, step back, move. Step back.
That point that the ref took from him from that low, low blow definitely helped George. Thank you. Fun stat numbers in the 12th round. Foreman landing 29 out of 45. Savarese 19 out of 63. There were moments when it was indeed Rocky Six. <laughs> Crowd got its money's worth. Harold Letterman, how did you score it? <laughs> Jim, I, I agree with all of you guys. 114-113, big George Foreman. Based on that one point that Eddie Cotton pulled in round 11, I thought quite unfairly for low blows. I mean, it was a very, very close fight. George Foreman certainly wore down Luis Avarice in the last four rounds. I thought George Wood clearly won rounds 9, 10, 11, and 12 with Savarese tired badly. I had Lou with, with a big 6-2 lead after eight rounds. Foreman just tied it up in the last four rounds and I believe that one point just as it did last week in the Junior Jones fight is going to make the difference. So on Letterman's card, Savarese wins six of the first eight rounds and Foreman gets credit for winning the fight. Interesting challenge to the three ringside scorers tonight here in New Jersey. A week ago here on HBO in Las Vegas, you saw a very close fight scored for Junior Jones against Marco Antonio Barrera as Jones won the late rounds with rapidly increasing pressure. Very similar script here tonight in an entirely different looking fight. Let's go up the ring and out to Mark Barrow. Out. Now we pause as they tell us that they need a moment to recheck the three scores with the judges. And Larry Merchant tells us that he has heard in the ring. We're about to hear a split decision. Now let's go to ring announcer Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Judge Al DeVito scores it 114, 113, Savarese. Judge Barbara Paris scores it 115, 112, Foreman. And Judge Shafiq Rashada scores it 118, 110, for the heavyweight champion of the world, Big George Foreman! Foreman! 118-110. George Foreman, winner by split decision. The third judge announced, Shafiq Rashada, scores it 118-110 for Foreman. After the first two scores, Al DeVito, 114-113 for Savarese. Barbara Perez, 115-112 for Foreman. So an unusual divergence on the scorecards, and Foreman gets credit for the 76th win of his career. <laughs> Big George never stops. And you have to assume that Mr. Rashada is an aficionado of power punching. Yes, he is. And now let's go to Larry Merchant with George Foreman. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, George. Were you surprised that it was a split decision? Well, it was a, a decision for me, and that's all that counts. Sometimes you, you do your best, and the other judges see that the other guy did his best. and it's, it's like a beauty contest. I'm just happy to have the victory. At one point during the fight, we heard you say in the corner, I don't understand how he's standing up. I did not understand that. I hit this guy with lead right hands and lead left hands that should have dropped anyone. I don't know where he's got the strength in the legs to do that. I still don't understand that. Are you, were you surprised that he showed that kind of jaw given the fact that he hasn't been confronted with a big puncher before in his career? I was forewarned about this guy's courage and his strength. Even the odds favored him somewhere in Las Vegas. So I knew that he would be standing there when the fight ended. I was trying for a knockout, but if it didn't happen, I wanted to be a welterweight. I've been watching enough of those young fighters on HBO to know how to box <laughs> a little bit. I'm learning as I go. 
George, at least on our card, you were behind the first half of the fight. Did you consciously step it up? Did you think that he weakened in the later rounds? Well, I was landing a lot of power shots early on and wasn't counting on putting together a lot of combinations, just power shots, hoping to drop him. And when I saw that wasn't going to happen, so I just picked up and started landing a number of jabs, r lead right hands and things of that nature to get the points on the board. Did he ever hurt you? Yeah, I was hurt a couple times. Really? With what? Uh, he threw one, I think it was a straight right hand, hit me on top of the head. And uh, I thought I was going to do the boogaloo for a moment, but I realized people are going to dance and say, George is not, can't even dance like the rapper, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> he hurt me that he did. Uh, I, can you tell us about your comments about the referee? Angelo said in there, the referee is okay, you're doing good with the referee. What did he mean? Well, the referee was not going to take any nonsense. He warned me a few times because I tried to go to the body and sometimes I slip a little below the border. I didn't go below the belt, but it was enough to make me understand that he was right because he did go low. And then the other guy holding me behind the head, he warned him fairly. It's seldom you get a good, honest referee. So I give all that to Larry Hazard. This man, I put my whole life in his hands. I even gave up the WBU uh, 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 notification or whatever you call it because I wanted La Larry Hazard, the State Athletic Commission here. After I saw the job he's been doing when we did the HBO fight, I trusted him to get fair judges and referees. Did you think he was justified in taking a, uh, a point away from Savarese for, for fouling? I can't remember that one. I thought he was taking it from me. <laughs> I really did. I said, uh-oh, I must have hit, hit him low or something. I didn't know. You mean it was Savarese? Yes. Oh, goodness. I thought it was me. Uh, George, you showed tonight that as long as a guy's going to stare there and punch you, you might be able to fight until you're 68. I don't know about that. I'm starting to confuse things more than I am helping things. I'm uh, almost 48, 50 years old. Tonight I had to box. I don't like boxing. I like knockouts. These guys are deciding, hey, I'm going to stay there and take some of this punch punishment, and uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. You're still in play. You won the fight. What are you hoping for next? Well, I just want to stay active. I'm a professional fighter. I've got about nine kids, and they're all trying to go to college. I can't talk them out of it. They don't want to play basketball or football. They won't get a scholarship. It looks like I'm going to have to pay for them. <laughs> and, uh, so I, 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 well, show me the money. <laughs> Thank you very much, George. Okay, thank you. Jim?